In this episode, we're really gonna get this project moving. A lot has happened since the last episode. When you last saw this trike, the rear axle looked like this. So how did I take off this and fabricate that? Let me show you. I'd just like to say I have started this video by wheeling the trike through dog poo, but that's fine. Okay, here's the plan. First thing is to unbolt this seat and to drill some more holes so I can move it back a little bit. So this whole rear section is actually bolted onto the frame of the main trike. So I'm planning to just unbolt it, make my own custom welded frame on the back, and I should be able to take the dimensions off the mobility scooter, and this part should be pretty straightforward. Oh. You can see I'm gonna lose a little bit of track, which is the width of the center line between the two wheels, but I think with a low center of gravity, it will still be stable enough, and I should be able to do what I wanna do. When the speed controller comes, that should be pretty straightforward to program as well. So the only hard part I'm expecting is cracking open the transmission and trying to lock the two sides. But for now, I'll try and get the frame done. So here is the frame that seat sits on. If I spin it around, you can see there's multiple holes. It's already as far back as the standard holes let it go, but it doesn't mean I can't drill some more and move this a little bit further. So I finished filing away this plate and it's quite neat now. If we switch to the close up, you can see all of the mounting holes on here. When I bought the trike, it was lined up with those ones. I moved it back to these ones. But as you can see, moving any further back blocks the access to these two bolts. But now I'm hoping to move it back a complete bolt and I still have access from the top. So by putting those two in, as I drill two extra holes, I know everything's gonna be aligned straight. All right, so the seat has been moved back. It doesn't seem too different. In fact, it's still a little bit tight, but that's not a huge concern. The foot pedals will be disappearing completely. Instead, there will be some bars coming out with some foot pegs here. That seems to be how all the ones on the internet work. My feet will be resting here, which means I won't be pedaling and therefore my legs won't be moving so much and digging into the edge of this seat. So it's been quite a successful night. You can see here the frame is mocked up. The frame is actually welded together and bolted to the front half of the trike. The motor is just sitting above. It just needs four bolts, which I need to buy longer ones for because this material is thicker than the one on the mobility scooter. And then I need to make a bracket to hold the battery at the rear. I should be able to do a quick test drive in this configuration before the speed controller comes, which I'm pretty excited about. Unfortunately, last night I ran out of gas, so I got to duck down to the nearest hardware store and get some more, and then I can continue on the build. You should always weld with long sleeves. You get really intense sunburn otherwise, like I did last night. So 
So I'm up to an extremely important step here. I have finished what I'm doing on the frame for this point in time and I need to decide where I'm going to bolt this rear axle. Now I can move it back like this and then potentially put the batteries right behind the seat or I could move it forward and put the batteries at the back here. The other thing I can do is rotate this whole thing 90 degrees to decide whether I want it high or low and where I want to position the motor. What I'm finding is having you sitting just in front of the rear axle seems to be ideal. So I'm just trying to package it as neatly as I can and then I'll drill the holes and this thing will actually be rolling, which is pretty exciting. One other thing that's going to factor in is the room behind the seat. I might want to move the seat even further back later on. So I don't want to put anything too close to that because it will limit me if I change my mind on where the seat is currently mounted. You know what, I think this is going to do it. Putting the batteries this way means I can fit them longitudinally. If they go from side to side, they don't quite fit inside the frame, which means they've got to sit up. So this means I'll have this whole rear section as protection for any rear arm impacts. Still a little bit of wiggle room down here, so I think this will be suitable for what I want. I'm going to measure to make sure that it's even and then drill my holes and let's get this bad boy going. See how she goes. Seems all right. So to start mounting the batteries, I've got this 20 by 20 square tube, and I'm gonna put it just behind the motor here, suitable to bolt this aluminium angle to, and that will keep it a little bit lighter. After that, I've got this cheap battery tie down system, so I might have another piece of aluminium strapped across the top of the two batteries, and it should be held in really nicely. Let's get this show back on the road. I'm very close to having the batteries in with some aluminium brackets. So let me talk you through what's coming up and then we should be able to do our first tests. Okay, this bracket is fixed in place. This bracket simply needs to be aligned and then have some holes drilled to put it in place. I've got these two retaining clips in the middle and then the batteries will sit either side of this and then I shall make a plate that goes across both of them and then use these with some rubber washers so they hopefully don't vibrate loose and the battery will be clipped down to the top. Having a nice piece of aluminium here across the top will also provide an ideal place to mount the speed controller once that arrives. All right, so the motor and batteries are mounted. I have this throttle here hanging doing nothing until my speed controller comes, but the brakes are working and these pedals are in the way. You might've noticed I have these hollow sections here sticking out. That's where the leg rails are gonna bolt in and then come out for my foot pegs, which means I can ditch the handles. At the moment, I have a really rudimentary system for powering this and that's applying full voltage immediately. And it works pretty well but the speed controller will be much better. Time to get these foot pedals done. 
Got these two materials in roughly the same size. One is aluminium. It's very light, not as strong as this, which is mild steel galvanized. This is left over from an old athletics hurdle. I'm gonna see if this one is gonna work, only using nuts and bolts. And to start that, I have crushed down the end. I'm gonna feed it into the slot. I might apply a slight bend outwards and then a bolt through for the foot peg. And if it's not strong enough, I haven't wasted too much time, hopefully, and I can come back to these. Got to check for clearance. It needs to bend out definitely from this position. In terms of where my foot can go comfortably, probably roughly in line with the front axle center line when it's in the dead straight position. I think that would be acceptable. Here we have these beautiful pieces of aluminium bent with a vise and a hammer, a little bit of heating too, just to help. Let's hammer them into place, take a measurement and then cut them off on the drop saw. Okay, that is even. Hoping, yep, there's a little bit of play so I can set these up a little bit away from the ground before I put the bolts in down this end. And once again, I'm gonna go for the center line of the wheel roughly. I'll use a tape measure to get them both the same on each side. And I've simply got to drill a hole, put the bolt through here, chop off the excess. I think I need to angle them up to get my heel away from the ground. Maybe a little bit longer in that case. Yep. Please don't flex, please don't flex, please don't flex. I think that's good enough, that's strong enough. Foot's not gonna hit the ground. I think as long as the ground is flat, that's gonna be not too bad. Time for side two. All right, it's going pretty well. Now if I turn it too far, the tire can technically hit the frame, but I'm about to cut that short, so that should be impossible. Also, I don't want to run into someone and chop their ankle in half with this piece, so I'm going to use the grinder to cut it down so I can do so without disassembling everything. This thing's looking pretty badass, I reckon. Before I take it for my first test drive, I just wanted to remove the pedals because I don't want them to spin around and smashing me in the shin. Just managed to get one crank off. You must have a specialist tool after you remove the end bolt to pry this off. I don't have it, so I've improvised and it worked the first time. So let's see if we can get it to work a second time. There she goes. Check that everything spins freely, which it does, and we are ready for a test drive. So a lot of this is temporary. The speed controller is gonna go on top of here, plus I'm also gonna put in another one of these braces here because there's a little bit too much wobble for my liking at this stage. But all I'm doing to activate the motor is a direct switch. Now this wire will all be replaced with this thicker gauge wire. This will be shortened, everything will be tidied up. The purpose of this is to just get a first test in to make sure the thing can move and then I'll do everything properly in the next episode. Whoops. So at the moment, I only have on-off speed control, so torque is delivered instantly, which is not very good for traction. I can do a test at very low speed. It's enough of a proof of concept to know that we can continue. Yep, 
You'll notice a lot of the time that I have trouble initiating the slide. That's because only the inside wheel is spinning. Once the two wheels are locked together, it's going to snap sideways a lot more quickly and be a lot easier to control. So successes were the brakes working, always a bonus. These foot pedals, they got a tiny bit of flex, but if I put my foot in the right place, my heels don't scrape on the ground. Um, things that need improving, some of which I already knew about, were making it so the two wheels are locked together. And I think I'm gonna cut these down and narrow them because at the moment it's just way too big, too much traction. So that's going to do it for this episode. There's still some problems that need overcoming there, but the speed controller is due to arrive tomorrow, as well as the axle for the mobility scooter. So in the next episode, we should be moving our focus to that and tidying up the loose ends on this, and we're heading towards completion. See you then. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.